Hi. Thank you, Lynn. Um, what, um, I guess it's a little bit early, but listen, um, Lynn, I wanted to, to um, ask you or get your consent. Uh, I wanted to try something uh, new with my with my hour and basically um, what it is I've I completed one year uh, year anniversary and I enjoyed it thoroughly and so I was thinking about well is there something else I can do maybe make a change in the format and um, so what I'm thinking about doing is I have been studying or so started studying a um, a series of books and what they're called is the cosmic history chronicles there's a series of seven of them and i wanted to um feature these in in my hour so um and what they are is um um very much uh i don't well the, it, it follows all along the line of the of the course in many ways and who wrote them are Jose Arguelles and Stephanie South and what what this does from like I said I've I've probably been like two three weeks into them and there's a lot of similarities as far as the intent let's say uh, of the mind training of the um, the ego thought system but what this does is it puts it into a um, what he calls a cosmic perspective where they take it from the you could say the big bang or even pre Big Bang, you know, which the course would call the the um, the uh, the thought, the tiny, I forget, the little thought that creep, the creeping thought, or <laughs> or whatever, and um, and it just and it just goes through the the history of let's say evolution. Of um, of consciousness, but he puts it in in a in a um, evolutionary period, and in a period where we're at right now, and it's and like like for instance, like right now we're seeing terrorism in in um, and we call ISIS. We see ISIS as a terrorism. We see 9/11 as something, and we look at those things as events but what this does it it defines what these events are in terms of of our evolution as 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 we are moving from more of a materialistic society into a spiritual um, society and not really society really of a of a uh, species and um, so anyways I wanted to um, put it out there. I want to read uh, an introduction to it, and then I want to comment on it, and um, and um, and see what um, what you think. Most of all, Lynn, and um, but I think there's it's really interesting, and I don't think it deviates. Uh, from the intent of the of the room as far as wakening together because this is falls along the same lines of what uh, awakening together is trying to accomplish so what what I want to do that I'm going to go from the introduction and at least go through that but I also what I want to do is I want to read a um, a um, note that they put on there about um, how um, of what to look out for when you're reading it and so it um, before before anything this is what they what they say it says a word about changes in voice 
Throughout the text of Cosmic History Chronicles, there are numerous changes of voice. These changes of voice are an intricate aspect of all of of aspect of the all encompassing dynamic of cosmic history which cannot be confirmed to a single I mean cannot be confined I better put my glasses on cannot be confined to a single voice such as third person singular cosmic history is everything inside outside microcosm macrocosm objective subjective all of us and none of us to restrict ourselves to only the use of third person singular would be to altogether limiting changing changes in voice also reflect the source of cosmic history as a living transmission delivered from shifting dimensions sometimes this voice is objectively descriptive sometimes cosmic history is talking to you sometimes it is we the authors or even all of us participating in the formation of its most fundamental precepts there is also a use of gender in multiple ways he she god woman etc to indicate an actual non-exclusivity of gender. In cosmic history, gender is comprehensive. So that is a note about what it's going to sound like. I imagine it's going to shift from gender to gender. Okay, so I want to start with the introduction. And and what I'll be doing is I'll be, um, as I read... And I'll stop and make some comments and the comments will mostly be directed on how it relates to what we're trying to accomplish here in the Awakening Together Sanctuary. Okay, so um, and the introduction, preparing the reader for Cosmic History Chronicles. Cosmic History is a descent of the absolute a positive construct fitted to the closing of the cycle so in the first sentence the closing of the cycle I guess we and in further reading will figure out what the closing of the cycle is and he also describes a descent of the absolute which is something I'm not understanding right off the bat either about it is of the absolute descending so um, we will we will see when you first encounter cosmic history what you are actually dealing with is a confrontation of your own unexamined assumptions about reality and this is something that is very course related the first thing you do when you open the course is you are dealing with this confrontation of your own unexamined assumptions about reality therefore it is wise when you encounter this knowledge to be able to put your mind on hold that is to say your conceptual mind your mind of acquired knowledge your mind that you have inherited from birth to have to put this mind on hold and then practice how to keep it there and let me put the I'll go ahead and type the name of the author real quick here And Jose Arguelles is he is a author of a whole ton of 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 books, and I'm just starting to get into, or just 
getting into the tip of the of the iceberg on him. Okay, so um, the part I just read about the conceptual mind, the mind of acquired knowledge, your mind that you've inherited from birth, that would I would consider that to be the ego mind. And what they are urging us to do is to put this mind on hold and then practice how to keep it there. And this reminds me um, a lot about the mind training that we are asked to do in the Course of Miracles is to uh, understand the ego mind and then for what it is and put it in check put it in check and I don't really want to say that the course is telling us to how to control it um, I think it is really telling us to recognize it for the nothingness that that is um, that it is and uh, so the uh, blockages of the ego mind can be removed so we can let in different types of of um, of uh, aspects of the spiritual nature of who we are as love and peace intelligence and and order so and the next paragraph says through meditation you should practice stopping the mind and become familiar with the fact that your usual habitual thoughts arise without you even trying and this is a, a great description of uh, the mind training that the, that the course has been talking about of stopping the mind and become familiar with the fact of your usual habitual thoughts and these habitual thoughts intrude as a filter on reality and as a course says is that they're uh, they're, they're blocks and the whole purpose of the course is to get rid of the blocks so that the reality, the Christ reality, the Christ consciousness that, that who we are can reveal itself, can self reveal itself. It is important to see that your habitual thoughts or your concepts about reality are like phantoms that arise automatically, but they are just phantoms and I would relate to this to be the just what ego thoughts are survival thoughts fear thoughts are just like phantoms and they do in in um, the ego mind arise automatically um, that's the automatic pilot that I've been living on my my whole life there's important to realize how these phantoms can insert themselves automatically and unconsciously into the screen of your walk-in reality so that your behavior is actually a function of these thoughts or patterns about which you are basically unconscious and this is basically the autopilot that I have been living my my whole life is just reacting to a world that I think is real a world that is outside of me a world that makes me the victim um, a world that I can't change and that I'll never change which is a depressing and hopeless situation only when you truly see this can you approach new thoughts or 
a new vision of reality and that's the purpose of the course to remove blockages for the new vision of reality reality with a capital R okay the third paragraph in the case of cosmic history you are being presented with an entirely new model of reality a new galaxy and a new method for knowing so you have to be aware of subtle issues the name the nature I'm sorry the nature of the mind what is perceived and how the mind processes what is perceived um, what this reminds me of the, the perception um, what is perceived and how the mind processes what it perceives this is reminds me a lot of what is projection and this is what he I believe that that is being um, addressed uh, right here which is a very un unconscious state when when it, it is um, done in autopilot like um, like I have been doing <laughs> it begins with stopping the mind and realize that the mind is constituted of an endless number of concepts and guidelines that may or may not be connected and on based on unexamined assumptions about reality and I really like this line here because it indicates that it is constituted with a endless number of concepts and guidelines <clears throat> in the course it indicates that there is just one reason and that and that reason is separation and once I finally understood that that the ego mind is constitutes the 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 separate separation it invents all of these different reasons and different blames and different causes as to why you're not happy uh, why you don't have this who's causing this or what's causing this um, what political party is causing this what political party is gonna do something but it's all projection of the way that we believe ourselves to be it it's it is a, a projection of our separateness so everything out there is a projection of our separateness and of course when I didn't recognize there was an endless number of causes and concepts and guidelines but um, I realize now that there's only one cause of all of these endless projections that I have that are supposedly influencing my life and that is my belief in separation and there's only one solution is to work within myself to recognize who I am in re in in reality and not believe any of these endless number of concepts and guidelines okay next sentence you really have to look and see what all of these assumptions might be you have to see these and then realize that if you're going to contribute to the world model and I'm not sure yet what the world model is but I would um, gather to to think that this is the um, the salvation or um, that, that, that I, I forget what in the course calls it where all, where all of us go all of us go at one time I'm not sure I forget what that is um, I know in Spanish it's the filacion, but I 
I don't know, the atonement, okay? And, okay, let's see. See, you have to see these and then realize that if you're going to contribute to the world model, then you have to first take yourself out of it. And that is very much the, um, the whole logic of the Course of Miracles or um, any of the... Um, um, things that are that are studied in Awakening Together uh, Sanctuary is uh, working on ourself that we are the the co-creator of our experience and nothing else. All all our our we are the source. We are the source of our experience, and it's and not to to keep dwelling in autopilot. Of, of the ego. You have to pull the hooks of the present world model out of your own habits of thinking or ways of viewing things. And this, this to me relates to our belief or my belief in the present world model meaning that that everything outside of me means something but then I know the Course says that um, what does it say about nothing I, I know I do not know what anything means only in this way can you actually be ready to consider a new perspective or a new model of reality Intrinsic to this is a state, I'm sorry, intrinsic to this is the issue of discipline and exertion. Evolution is attained through exertion. Exertion is evolution. You evolve your mind by exerting in discipline and knowing. And... Uh, this to me points like uh, um, points to mind training and uh, very much so throughout the the course in miracles it is each each thing that is read is mind training and there's 365 lessons one for each day which is the the discipline and it is the um, the constant going over and over so the mind can evolve into the knowing of what of what um, what we really are it says you have to keep exerting you just don't stop no discipline really has its conclusion unless you have a clear grasp of these subtle points it is difficult to come to a correct understanding of cosmic history and I think this is is, is true with any kind of spiritual discipline because we are so um, I don't want to say brainwash but we are and that we are are um, out of touch with the real spiritual reality of of who we are and so it has taken me all my life all 60 something years of it to be living in this and so I myself have got to do something meditate and study um, every single day and it's um, there are study times but then I've got to be mindful every single minute every single hour as much as I can possibly of course I can't do I can't be that way 100% all the time because I'm just not there I'm just not that disciplined but the more disciplined that I come then the the discipline is more automatic um, 
the meditations are all more and more automatic as I uh, I like to pull a a um, a phrase from Joel Goldsmith which means practicing the presence and um, the presence of the Christ the presence of of being in a <coughs> meditative state uh, which is free of the ego thoughts as much as I can okay unless you control your mind how can you see what reality is well for the longest time I did not know all right great okay beautiful beautiful I'm so happy Lynn thank you thank you thank you um, okay so unless you control your mind how can you see what is what is real or what reality is and um, and what, which is true I've been living in in a un, not in the real reality I've been living in the ego reality okay so our um, our next paragraph with continued effort the discipline of studying cosmic history begins to have a culminative cumulative qualitative effect that increasingly elevates your everyday consciousness into a fourth dimensional perception of reality and what that means to me it is in a spiritual reality and not just a third dimensional material reality and um, that again is is very coarse related we're trying to move out of the ego reality into the spiritual in this reality everything seems dreamlike and made out of space and the cultivation of cosmic perceptions and cosmic sensations occur much more easily and I would have to say that um, cosmic perceptions cosmic sensations are spiritual perceptions spiritual sensations I'm not exactly sure what a spiritual sensation is yet but maybe it is it is a um, a um, a freedom is what I would think it it would be a lightening of the density that we are um, as far as the dreamlike and made out of space the, once again I would think the the dreamlike which means un unmaterial or or um, or not um, not um, fearful they'd be more lighter and made out of space and space would would me for me would mean the opening of the imagination um, the emotion of opening up the imagination to be free to love to, free to be creative free to dance free to sing have the space to be who we really are okay this process itself is the effect of cosmic history by this we mean that the words or the phrases cosmic history refers to a type of mental experience a quality or state of mind of the cosmic field of perception now a cosmic field of perception to me represents a the bigger picture the observer uh, observer view of not being a attached to the ego and attached to people places things circum circumstances is um, what my take on the cosmic field of perception from the it's from the um, um, a full view let's say a full view of of the whole um, experience of reality okay 
next paragraph these considerations are merely to help you get to a point where you are able to understand and appreciate what we are dealing with a radically newer form of reality that has yet been presented to the human species and he has newer in parentheses meaning that this is what it is the newest let's say right now maybe but he's leaving room in there that as we evolve that that newer is going to change because our um, our perception our 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 um, evolutionary knowledge is going to change I mean our our uh, the way we live right now is radically different from just 10 years ago uh, you look at all the smartphones internet and so on and so forth it's important to know how to approach the new information templates of cosmic history in a receptive way so they can impress and imprint you now I like this last sentence a, a lot because it is indicating that we need to listen that we have to deal with it in a receptive way now to be dealing with it in a receptive way does not mean reading them with the ego it doesn't mean reading this to try to get something from it to um, or to use because it is saying that they impress and imprint you what 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 I've learned is that I need to take ego out of what I am reading in order for it to um, imprint imprint in me it's because I've I have discovered that when I'm reading the course and analyzing it and thinking about it and putting it in an ego construct of how am I going to use this to feel better how am I going to use this to impress how am I going to use this to to um, get more peace or be happy those when, when I when I read something study something with that kind of intent then it 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 never works in it um, it never really penetrates to where it really needs to penetrate and it's like I need to to open my heart my soul and, and to it and read it without any kind of of judging and ego analysis of survival I'm not saying not to to dwell on it as a, but I'm saying dwell on it like in a meditative state so you so that so that the the, the wisdom can come in without being blocked by my limited ego um, consciousness and my ego thought system that'll only that'll only filter it into how am I going to use it and how am I going to get something out of it if I'm reading this and the ego doesn't see and I'm reading with the ego and the ego doesn't see how it's going to benefit its purpose then it's just going to put this down and 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 there it goes I'm not, nothing nothing is going to going to happen with this so I like that last sentence and I read it over one more time it is important to know how to approach the new information in templates of cosmic history in a receptive way so they can impress and imprint you so that is the introduction which um, to me is a, a um, is preparing you how to read this and in as far as with a with an open mind and and receptive so I want to go ahead and there is a preface that I'm going to to go into and I'm not going to comment on it as much as I have the first part 
Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get it done, but this will just, um, um, I think you give you, this is going to give you a little taste of the meat, the nuts and bolts of, of what this is all about. Okay, the preface, the philosophy of, com of cosmic history. But why should the operations of nature be changed? There may be a deeper philosophy than we dream of. A philosophy that discovers the secrets of nature, but does not alter by penetrating them its course. And this is a quote that starts it by Bulwer, B-U-L-W-E-R. And um, I have to tell you that as someone I'm not familiar with, but I guess it's an opportunity for me to look up this person and, um, and learn something from him. Okay, here we go. The philosophy of cosmic history is that the universe exists as a vehicle for the involution and evolution of the soul as a single all unifying circuit of all evolving divine consciousnesses regulated by the law of time. So um, I'm just going to read on because some of the stuff that I was going to try to define gets self-defined as as I'm going to read on on this. So I'm going to I'm going to read on and um, stop at a point where where um, I think where, where it makes sense. Okay, from this point of view, cosmic history represents a complete whole system of thought, as well as a complete whole field perception of reality and the universe. Therefore. A philosophy is implicit. Philosophy meaning an understanding of the actual nature of reality, which is assumed by the principle of cosmic history. Cosmic history is a discourse of the soul and its stages of involution and its stages of evolution. Involution is the process of going into further densification and evolution is the process of release from the densification. Involution of the soul can also be understood as the creation of matter. The more that matter is created, the more it proliferate, proliferates in all of its infinite variety of forms throughout the universe and all universes. All forms of matter exist as manifestation of the involution of the soul. The external aspect of matter represents the internal quality of soul. In other words, when you look at a flower or a crystal, you see an expression of a quality of soul that has taken the particular external manifestation. So, let me pause here. Okay, so what this is saying is that involution of the soul would be, let's say, I am a soul, or um, one of my dogs is a soul, and in it, I'm in the stage of evolution, which means that I am because I am this soul and I need to evolve then I need my arms, my legs, my my eyes, I need this body and to to do this this evolution 
so the involution of matter or of denses what it calls it densification so my my spirit has is going in order to evolve is got to get um, has to have this body or dense up or be more less spiritual and I think this is what's describing the tiny mad idea that the course is talking about we didn't like being pure spirit supposedly and I still really don't understand the tiny mad idea but still I can I can kind of relate to the results but um, so we decided we wanted to be matter so boom the big bang happens and and um, all these millions and millions of years we are evolving into what we thought or what we believed that we wanted so then that hence the densification of 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 us and then it calls out the evolution is a process of release from the de densification from the densification this is the first first time i've heard the word densification but i mean i can i can relate to it cuz pretty dense sometimes but so this is what the course is is having us do right now is to is to remove the blockages of the ego which cause us to be stuck stubborn and move in to a spiritual uh, spiritual consciousness and as you as you can see it's not limited the soul is not limited just to human beings it is um, it's very inclusive to everything everything that um, like I was mentioning uh, my dog my dog as as um, as a soul has has um, has the involution where it has to, where it evolves as the as the body of um, of a dog same thing with like flowers or or whatever the the thought of God is um, and the intelligence of God it is because everything has that intelligence and the order of of God in it there is not anything that God is is um is left out of the the intelligence order and harmony of god is is in all things whatever that looks like and this is what he is calling the quality of the soul is that whatever is manifest materially is um is um created from that purpose of of, of uh, that God has assigned to to it or created it for or what um, um, this part of of the the evolution of the whole universe okay so um, the next paragraph to think that there is a soul in a flower or crystal is due to the involution and evolution of soul as a single all unifying circuit okay so I'm, I'm seeing that the phrase of the day is up is my is my time up and is it time for this this to start if I can ask okay so no okay I was just just wondering if if everyone should be focusing on this phrase right now so anyways let me let me let me continue okay to think that there is a soul okay 
Okay, to think that there is a soul in a flower crystal is due to the involution and evolution of soul as a single all unifying circuit. We might think of this circuit as highly multiple with many different threads inside of it. Imagine that this all unifying circuit disperses itself invisibly through all the different forms of matter and life that exist in the universe. The circuit symbolizes the all evolving divine consciousness. And what this sounds um, very much um, to me is the unity or the oneness of, of reality, of, um, of all there is. And so the way this is being described is a circuit. And in a circuit, what I, what I envision is, is like an electrical circuit with energy, um, a, a frequency that is, um, that is present in, in the circuit which in in is and in its entire th entirety throughout um throughout the circuit so he he what he is is um um describing it as a unifying circuit that dispenses itself which which once again to me this points to order an intelligence that is inherent in in everything that exists as which means that we are all on the same circuit in one way in one way um i was going to say one way or the other but no that's all in one way that we are all bound by um this unifying circuit and what's important here is a, what he calls it it's a single all unifying circuit not two not three circuits it's just one one single unifying circuit and i like that description as a um as a circuit or frequency or electricity or or um that um that power of of a circuit that is very much alive in um, in frequency and very much in in motion um, and very much powerful and has it and has that inherent power um, and that in that inherent inherent power then there is that that ability to to affect um, creation change so I, I really do like that you know that uh, that comparison to the to the um, to the circuit <clears throat> okay so next paragraph so we have the principle of the soul which can be understood as a living breath of the thought of God that manifests in a particular form or form process. In this way, the crystal or flower represents a particular manifestation of what we might crudely call a thought or thought form of God. There is no other way to explain why a crystal is so exquisite yet many people think but a crystal is just dead matter it doesn't have any feelings it may be true that a crystal does not have the quality of sentinency that vegetable matter or plants have 
but it does not but it does have its own dazzling structure and form along with its intrinsic internal powers of transduction so here we see that that a soul is not limited to and this is the cosmic history point of view um, you know and I'm thinking I'm not even sure if, if the course really defines the soul as just a, a um, something that's living I know like the Catholic Church says that um, that um, only um, human beings has have um, have souls but um, here in this um, in, in this concept the um, the um, concept of, of a um, of a soul is um, is anything that is um, that has its own um, its own divine purpose assigned to it by by God or or the universe okay so in the next um, paragraphs okay well nobody really knows this well I, I, I guess nobody really knows anything um, but anyway the next paragraph and this what, what I'm reading from what I'm reading from is is a um, a book which is a, um, a another thought system which I believe is related to the course and so this is what I am reading from I'm not trying to prove anything that is 100 percent correct or or uh, right or wrong or anything what I'm just presenting a um, a philosophy that I feel adds to the purpose of the awakening together room so anyway so the next the next paragraph goes in this intrinsic potentiality of energy transduction coupled with its form that constitutes the soul of the crystal in this way soul is the primal divine thought of God that goes into a manifest form giving that form its structure purpose and function so what what this paragraph or what this is saying is that the 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 qualities of God which they're calling a divine thought of God which the divine thought of God is for me is order is intelligence is purpose and it's a divine purpose that this crystal has and not just limiting to a crystal it's limiting it is really the a function of anything that serves the function of God okay so and then this even goes even further further out even a machine can be said to possess a soul in so far as it has place in it has place into it thought intention purpose function and purpose when it is turned on you like it and you pet it and you say it's nice if it's a useful machine you don't want it to stop so we see that everything is permeated by this all unifying circuit evolved by divine consciousness okay I'll go one more paragraph and and then we will um, go into the quote of the the day okay 
the universe is a complete complex whole thought of God consisting of infinite numbers of forms processes and structures all of which exist for the involution and evolution of the soul f from nothingness into density and from density into light in the nothingness there was there is only the void then God fills that void with the thought which um, I had said earlier the void being that maybe the tiny mad idea that starts the whole separation process going the thought then becomes a manifestation and in that process of manifestation which the law of time defines as the evolution of time as consciousness the thought goes through the stages of pre-conscious and intrinsical unconscious and then into types of more evolved unconscious until finally the thought reaches a level of consciousness and continuing consciousness the final stage is properly speaking the stage of evolution in some sense you could say it is all evolution but it is actually broken down into these two processes of involution and evolution and I see a lot of the the course in miracles in this concept of involution and evolution especially when we consider the tiny man idea which I don't believe the course says exactly that it is the Big Bang but obviously it is the the separation from spirit which means a um, the involution of what he's talking about which is the densification which turns us which creates our bodies of what we are right now and because of the bodies we identify with the body which means that we are uh, which develops our ego consciousness and the whole point of the Course in Miracles is the the um, to remove the blockages of the identification with the material and to evolve into what we truly are in in spirit so um, to me this is very much course like it is it is a different type of um, direction path that it is taking and and how it explains the um, well uh, what I'm what I'm trying to say is it, it explains it more in terms of a whole evolutionary process of reality is the direction that it's coming from but this for me is not really a deviation of what the intent of the Course of Miracles is and so with that I am going to um, close I'm, I'm not going to go in into the any other of the paragraphs 
but um, I want to um, thank Lynn for allowing me to explore this possibility of um, of presenting this on um, on my show. Uh, I have not read all of it, and matter of fact, I'm just starting on this first book, but. Um, for me, I think it's worthwhile. It sounds like it might get a little complicated. Um, so, but if that's the case, and if it gets so complicated that um, it's it's hard to follow, then um, maybe I'll just start summarizing uh, some of the parts and not so much of the nuts and bolts. Um, so, anyways, um, I am going to turn the mic over to the um, to the quote of um, of the day thank you everybody for listening and thank you once again then I appreciate you so much